Welcome everyone, so glad you joined us today. I'm Sheila Gale, this is Inspiration For Your Life, and we have a great guest for you today, one of my favorite people, Dr. Eric Pearl is with us. Now let me tell you a little bit about, for those of you who don't know about this incredible man. He was working as a chiropractor in Hollywood several years ago, and one day, the story goes, something like this, I'm gonna get it kinda close, but he put his hands over the patient and all of a sudden they started to heal without him touching them. So this phenomena just continued and continued and he is now the, he's the developer and creator of The Reconnection. It's sold millions of copies and in 39 different languages and it's uh, all about this energy that he a has access to that he teaches that he shares in his um, workshops worldwide. He's always on the road around the world. We're so lucky to have him today. Dr. Eric Pearl, welcome to the show. Thank you. You make me sound so interesting. I want to watch the show myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Well, you are interesting. And so this phenomena that happened, mm -hmm. that you share it with all these people, thousands at a time, and children seem to pick it up really easily too, and, and learn this. So. Describe this, if you will, to our, our uh, viewers. Describe it from the, the background stories you started to talk yes, about, uh -huh. or how it came about. Yeah. It started in a very unusual way. I was minding my own business asleep, and all of a sudden a bright light woke me up. I opened my eyes to see what it was, and it wasn't anything seemingly metaphysical. It was just the lamp next to my bed turned itself on. I had that lamp for 10 years. It hadn't turned itself on before. Hmm. But um, I thought maybe it was some kind of an electrical short or whatever the opposite of a short is because mm -hmm. I think shorts turn things off instead of on. But at the same time, I felt as if I had been being watched, as if, as if there were someone in my house watching me. And it's not a comfortable feeling to wake up to this. It's so uncomfortable. I actually got up with a knife and I found an old can of pepper spray I remember was in the back of a drawer somewhere and my Doberman pincher and went hunting through the house. Couldn't find anyone. <laughs> After about 15, 20 minutes, I told myself it had to be my imagination, even though it didn't feel like it, and mm -hmm. I went back to sleep. Thought that would be the end. But that Monday, I went in to work with my patients. I would adjust them chiropractically, mm -hmm. finish with them lying on their back, and tell them to close their eyes and relax for a minute or so to allow the adjustment to settle into place. When I removed my hands from them, I was feeling sensations in my hands I had not felt before. And as I started exploring the sensations in my hands, I would start to see their bodies begin to jerk or their mm. fingers move. I could find little spots that would pull the muscles in their forehead, cause them to ripple or pull at their lips. I could find spots that would become larger. Their eyes would dart back and forth when they opened their eyes. They reported seeing colors <coughs> they had never seen before. They started telling me they were smelling flowers they'd never smelled before, and they started reporting healings, real healings. They were getting up out of wow. wheelchairs, some of them. Wow. Vision and hearing returning. Um, kids with cerebral palsy or epilepsy <coughs> were suddenly able to walk and run and play and speak normally, not have seizures, not need medications any longer. Their, their parents would call, ask what I had done. Their doctors would call. They said, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything, and don't tell anyone. Of course, the more I said that, the more everyone started talking, and soon people started asking me to teach this. I said, you can't teach this. I said, I'm waving my hands there, looking like a fool. I said, you go outside, wave your hands in the air, let me know what your neighbors have to say about you. But more and more, my patients would report that when they left my office and drove home, they pulled up in front of their house, and before they could hit the button to open their automatic garage door, it started to open and close by itself. Wow. Or they walked inside, their lamp or their television started turning off and on by itself. They felt sensations in their hands. They would hold their hands near someone in their family. Suddenly the grandfather could walk after the stroke. The uncle regained their hearing. I finally decided to wow. teach it as best as I could, and the way I started teaching it was by, oh, I know what we're going to do right now, by allowing people <clears throat> to feel it. Would you like to? Mm-hmm. Okay, give me one of your hands. Just open your fingers for me right where they are. Got them? Hold them mm -hmm. right there. As I bring my hand down, see how your fingers start to move? Yeah. See how they start to pull stronger? Wow. Are you moving your fingers or are your fingers no. moving? No. What's that feel like to you? 
It feels really cool. Uh huh. It in feels, more ways than one. It yeah. probably also has a cool feeling. It, that's what it. I was just going to yeah. say. It feels really like uh -huh. cool. Cool. Notice sometimes my hands become cold with it. Very cold. But other times not. So yeah. I started letting people mm. feel this and then showing them how to work with it, how to manifest it. You feel that in your mm -hmm. body now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see it. Right. <laughs> because it moves wow. throughout the whole body. Do you know that there are six studies so far? I have trained close to 100,000 people around the world mm -hmm. how to do reconnective healing. We're really showing people how to access a healing that allows time to disappear and come about fairly instantaneously, altering the tissue physically, altering people's lives, mm. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationship-wise, career-wise. There are six studies so far that show that that tiny little interaction, you notice how your finger still is moving when mm. I'm not doing that? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. That tiny little interaction has affected your DNA. Mm. What the studies, the independent studies have shown internationally is that it, they say it restructures I like to say it reconnects mm -hmm. our DNA. Now, what's interesting is that our bodies don't heal the way we were taught. Our bodies don't heal through a biochemical model. Mm -hmm. They heal as more and more people are recognizing it in the fields of quantum physics and medical research through informational exchange, light, resonance, energy, vibration, entrainment. And when it restructures our DNA, the DNA from each of our cells that our bodies emit, now we know this from the work of Dr. Fritz Popp in Germany and others, the DNA becomes higher and more coherent, which seems to be why the researchers feel that the healings are so fairly instantaneous. Now I'm watching you as we're talking. I know, so Here, much. There's, explain. <coughs> like there's a tickle, I've, there, and I hear some of the camera people are, <coughs> we're having little tickles. I'm having like a tickle fluttery in, in my throat and it does it. Oh my God, that is amazing. Are you guys looking at this? I am not doing this. Wow, 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 wow. How cool is that? So we speak it. You know, you think that this is something you would think that it would just kind of woo-woo maybe to the people who are already open to the concept of healing and metaphysics, they might be open to this, but you know? Mm -hmm speak and present this work at hospitals, universities. I would train close to maybe about 20,000 mainstream healthcare practitioners, doctors, nurses, physical therapists. Um, I believe I mentioned we spoke at the United Nations, Madison Square Garden. And the most exciting is when we go to venues at hotels all around the world mm -hmm. and teach the work to lay people. Because people who come in already experienced in energy healing, sometimes they think that they know all the answers and that blocks them mm, from getting not the open. fullness of yeah. this. Some people who come in, you know, saying this can't possibly mm. be true, sometimes they limit themselves a little from gra grasping it in the beginning until they witness mm. it just the way you experience mm -hmm. it. But the mainstream people who say, all right, tell me something interesting and I'll listen. Mm -hmm. Say something else interesting, I'll engage you in conversation. Say something else interesting, and we'll interact and learn from one another. Here's where we get to make the biggest change. Mm -hmm. It's not from appealing to the choir. Right. It's from a, a, and, and it's not from wasting our time arguing with people who absolutely just want to argue, but from people who are just open. The world is looking for something that's interesting to them, new, different, and this brings about levels of healing that we haven't been able to access through our energy healing techniques, through Reiki and Shigong and Jinshin and Jore and mm -hmm. Alpha, Beta, Delta and Quantum this and Mattress that and all of these, yeah. you know, ABC techniques have been focusing in on energy. Mm -hmm. But reconnective healing is not a technique. It's a way for us to remove the training wheels of technique from our bicycles hmm. of healing so that we access the entirety of the energy in this field we've been existing in. We exist in a four-dimensional field of height, width, depth, and time. So in quantum physics, they illustrate that as a bubble. They say, imagine this balloon or this bubble in this vast, endless universe. 
The bubble is height, width, depth, and time. Mm -hmm. And inside has been energy. So our energy healing techniques have us focus in on the little portions of energy. Step one, to let go of the techniques. Access the entirety of the energy. The new part of the gift mm -hmm. is that time is moving faster in all directions at once. Time is expanding. Our balloon or bubble is expanding further and further out in the universe. And when a balloon expands, it becomes thinner, more permeable. Oh, great what's analogy. Been, right. Yeah. What's been inside can communicate with what's been outside. Oh, okay. So time, our balloon mm -hmm. of time, time is actually disappearing as mm -hmm. we know it from science. It feels like it too. Exactly. And what we interact with are new levels of light and information that haven't been here before, that oh, we can't okay. get through an energy healing technique because that keeps us in subsets of energy. Sort of stuck. In right. Yeah. We have to expand beyond the mm. subsets of energy and then beyond energy into what has always existed but isn't old. Mm -hmm. It's always existed outside of the balloon of time. Mm. So it's been timeless, but it's new here To us, today. yeah. Well, I, I've talked to people that have been in your, um, in your workshops and they just said, oh my God, like the, the, the feeling, the energy, the palpable, you know, measure of, of change that happened in that room. And I actually have a dear friend who is a reconnective healer and just, just is just making a difference all over the world as you are. And that's wonderful. So, you know, obviously we have a very sick planet, you know, and, and it's just so wonderful that you're doing what you're doing and getting out to the masses, you're, you're traveling all over the world all the time. Well, we do approximately 40 seminars and presentation combinations a year around the world. We're changing the seminars just this year. Mm -hmm. We're expanding them because I didn't feel that I could give enough in the weekend seminars. We call it Saturday Level 1, Sunday Level 2. So now we're expanding the Level 1 to Saturday and Sunday, Level 2 to Monday and Tuesday. We're giving an expanded level of education to the practitioners so that they can bring an expanded level of uh, performance in the highest sense of the word of gift that they're bringing of reconnective healing onto the planet. So there's a very big change if you go to the reconnection.com, just like the book is The Reconnection. If you go to the reconnection.com, you can find the seminars all around the world. I think we're starting with Paris and Milan. We have a few in the US. We'll have them in um, not just in Europe, but in South America, um, all around the globe. They're usually translated in anywhere from one to up to seven languages. 39 languages, this one here, right? The Reconnection. This book is uh, translated in 39. And so you have, you have interpreters on hand? On well, no, we, hi we have interpreters that we know in different countries, mm -hmm. you know, and we hire see, them. And yeah. we, so let's say, for instance, um, we gave a seminar in Italy, mm -hmm. and we had seven different trans... It looked like the United Nations. They're wow. all in their own booths, and mm -hmm. everyone was in the headsets. And, How cool. And what happens is, is that I walk around to each of the tables. So does our internationally trained team of teaching mm -hmm. assistants. We show you how to feel it, how to find it, just like I have with mm -hmm. you. I see your hands are still shaking. And by the end of the seminar, mm -hmm. I can pretty much make you two promises. Ready? Ready. One, you, if you come to one, mm -hmm. you will be able to do anything and everything in the way of healing that I can do. And two, you will be able to do anything and everything in the way of healing that any human being anywhere on this planet can do, whether they were raised by monks in a cave in a mountaintop in Tibet or whatever their story is, whatever techniques they've mastered or learned or created, you'll be able to do any of it without technique. It doesn't mean that you will do it. That comes the choice. Do you have a, the, the choice ability. is if you're yeah. willing. If you're willing. To let go of the techniques, you will be able to access this as fully as anyone on the planet. But when we hold on to our techniques, we're holding on to our limitations. We block it. We're holding on to yeah. the training wheels on the bicycle. Right. The training wheels helped us. They're gorgeous, the training wheels of technique. But until we actually remove the training wheels, we never receive the full gift. Can't ever ride the of bike. The technique. Right. Right. right, so very good point. We're here today to learn that the true gift of the technique comes in its transcendence. Mm. So I, I love that you um, mentioned the very, very key to be willing and be open. Not saying you have to believe, just are you willing? You don't have to believe at all. If I take this crystal and place it on the table, mm -hmm. 
the table will catch the crystal. And I can pretty much promise you that the crystal does not believe in the table, but the table is. Oh, this like level that. of healing doesn't require mm. faith, mm. hope, or belief. When it first started happening, my patients were coming in to see a chiropractor, and I thought I was one. Couldn't double blind a study better than that. Mm. The healings just are. Wow, that is amazing. And you do, uh, you teach this to children. And tell me about how receptive children are with this work. We have shorter seminars for children that are only hours because children pick it up so easily because they don't come in with the ego of they already know. Mm -hmm. And they don't come in with the artificial fears that they have to shake negative energy off and spray themselves mm -hmm. down with alcohol and worry about should they move clockwise or counterclockwise, <laughs> except in New Zealand and Australia where it becomes more confusing. <laughs> they don't have the things to undo. Yeah. You know, as adults, mm -hmm. we've been taking the perspective of looking at children as if they're placed here as empty vessels for us to fill with everything that we know. I think mm. really the discovery is that our children are empty vessels placed here to teach us how to become empty vessels once again. Mm. Beautifully said, yes, and you know, my, my generation for sure, and probably forever, we've been dumped into and and uh, and now I'm trying to undump it all to you know get to the place you know that you're talking about. But none of these things, you know, we talk about you were dumped in and you're trying to undump. Mm -hmm. None of these things are bad. You know, our energy healing teachers today aren't all masters. The teachers teach us, do this technique, do that technique, protect yourself, do this ritual, do that. They, they instill fear into us. This doesn't mean they're bad. This is where energy healing has been. And when we all die and we return to that light and we see each other, we're going to embrace those teachers, love them and thank them and say, thank you for playing your role so perfectly. You brought me to a point of fear where I was finally able and willing in this lifetime to say, I'm not going to exist in fear any longer. I'm going to release these techniques and mm. come from love because without them, we might not have gotten out of our fears. Every choice we make, every action that we take comes either from fear, lack, and limitation or love, prosperity, mm -hmm. light, oneness, unity, and abundance. Can't stand in fear, protecting ourselves in flames and spraying ourselves down with alcohol and bring about healings that reside in love. At some time, we must step through the fears into the love to discover that's who we are we have to even step through the fear of the illusion of time mm. into a timeless being mm. to recognize that healings occur like this and the rest of it is just what it takes for us to choose to accept <sighs> the mm. possibility god you just say that so beautifully and so Thank clear you. no it's really and so clearly it's it's just so much easier to grasp the way I mean, I'm a doctor's daughter, so you know I uh, know a lot about that. Um, we lingo does not help us communicate. Ah, uh. dressing it up in doctor's language. Mm -hmm. What are you know? We diagnoses. We don't even know what they mean. Diagnosis is naming your symptoms in Latin. What does that help? We're, we you know everything can be clear and clean and plain and simple and recognizable. If we just allow ourselves to release the need to talk on a level that's less than comprehensible. Mm, mm. The energy language. Um, and it just uh, makes a lot of sense. And I feel like I have, oh gosh, we're almost out of time. We've got just about a minute left. Can we speak of this Solomon, speaks. Solomon Speaks on Reconnecting I'll Your Life? I'll tell you about Solomon Speaks very briefly, okay. which was when these healings first started happening, and I was holding my hands near my patients and their bodies were jumping and jerking. Mm -hmm. One of my patients lost consciousness and spoke some words. And then the next day it happened to three patients, the next day it happened to five other patients, and over the next three months, they spoke six verbatim phrases, including, we are here to tell you to continue doing what you are doing. What you are doing is bringing light and information onto the planet. What you're doing is reconnecting strings. What you're doing is reconnecting strands. There were two more phrases. Then after three months, it stopped coming through everyone except for the co-author of this book, Frederick Ponslov. And we continued as this source we call Frederick. Solomon mm -hmm. used Frederick as a telephone to deliver messages to me. We continued to record these messages and transcribe them and put them into a book. Wow. And here it is. Voila. It's just been out for less than a year. I think it's already in 20-some languages. Well, 
isn't he amazing? Your mother must be so proud of you. <laughs> you know, my mother, another time we do an interview, I'll tell you well, briefly, my mother died giving birth to me and came back to life and told of the story. And it's the entire second chapter in The Reconnection. It, is, it was the most difficult story to write because we don't have words to convey, so we did the best we could with it. But it's so exquisite. And for anyone who is either maybe told that they might be facing their own mortality or with a loved one who might be and having a difficult time going mm -hmm. through it, Chapter 2 of The oh. Reconnection, I believe, is a phenomenal gift to help give a perspective that, that makes the transition so beautiful. And that's why they are bestsellers. So, um, Dr. Eric Pearl, The Reconnection, go to thereconnection.com to find out wh where he'll be speaking and teaching next to buy his book, Solomon Speaks, on reconnecting your life. It was an absolute pleasure to have it you here. It was my pleasure. And, I, you know, let's do this again, and all the best to you. Thank you. I would you. love to do that. Let's do that. Listen, our first seminar of the year starts in... Paris in February. So pack your bags and come. Oh, sounds good. I haven't been to Paris yet. So thank you guys for being here, uh, sending you infinite love and appreciation. Until next time, thank you for the gift you are to the planet. Bye-bye for now.